All right, what's going on, guys? So, antique store purchase here. A little cross peen hammer, what for banging on hot metal and what the like. So, the handle, as you can see here. Well, I don't know how well you can see it, but she very loose, but very comfy handle. And I would like to make another one as similar to it as possible. So I think we're going to see if I can't beat this handle out of this head. Take a few measurements on this and see if we can't uh, recreate this thing on the lathe. Oh! Try not to do that. Holy sh**, that hurt. I like the way these look, so we're going to try to duplicate this on the lathe. I'll put a little card in the corner right here, right there. There'll be a card there linking to one of the previous ones I did, a wooden mallet. Um, but this one is going to be for beating on metal, and I'm going to see if I can't make it a little bit clearer than I did in that one. So... Probably not, but, you know, I'm not the most eloquent person in the world, but I'll do the best I can. Alright guys, so this part of the process sometimes is really hard to visualize. I still struggle with it. Um, I've done this a bunch of times, and I still struggle with uh, how this is going to lay out, and what my distance from my offsets is going to cause, and all that stuff. So, what what I'm going to do is just kind of, for, for me and for you, kind of visualize what's going on here. This handle is going to live in here like this. So when we offset this direction, we're cutting this surface only. And then when we offset this direction, we're cutting this surface only. We don't touch these until we're back on center of the workpiece. The further you go away from center, first thing you're going to notice is how much it's making your lathe rock rock and roll like all over the place if it's not bolted down you can actually have that thing walking across your shop so even really big lathes will walk if you get enough weight off center and you want this measurement far enough over to create this radius for you but you don't want it so far over that it's ripping your lathe off your workbench you know what I'm saying? So, I usually start out around half an inch or three-eighths max. Now, when I did the the handles for the bug, those were way off center. Um, and I'll put a clip right here so you can see what that looked like. On this one, we're going to go 3 8 off center. Now, here's the hard part. You're drilling into end grain, and they'll move. See, that's not where I left it. Looks like my measurements were off, too. So we need to find the center of those two marks. We're just going to move our center over on the workpiece a little bit. We're going to turn it round first, so it won't matter. These being off a sixteenth or so, it really isn't that big a deal. These are off, but when you're done, it's not going to translate that much. Now I want to flip this workpiece over, and I want to use the same uh, axis for my offsets. So now they're running that way because I flipped the board over. All right, so the way I check this, I hold it up, point up, point down. See that the lines are running up and down, and then I flip the board this way, the lines are still running up and down. I've got them in the same orientation, so that's good. Alright, so right now i got a little bit of wobble, because this thing wasn't true when I bought it, obviously. But, we're going to uh, get this thing turned to a cylinder, get it trued up to its center point. So everything between here 
and here I'll take down to two inches so I have a two inch cylinder here before I start that'll leave me plenty of material to make that radius on the sides that we don't cut until we go back to center and it leaves me plenty of meat out here for when I start going off center I'm not splitting off these edges trying to spin this thing off center so first order business get a two inch cylinder between these two waste blocks All right, we're not worried about it being perfect just yet, but we are gonna look and see where we're at. And I'm a little bit under two inches all the way across. We are going to move to our offset centers. Does not matter which one you choose first, just so long as you got it in the same one on both ends. Turn the speed down a little bit. Test bump. Much better. Alright, so she no dancing across the floor. Like this thing is. Get a little narrow there, a little fat there, a little narrow here, a little bit fat there, and then we're gonna taper this thing off. This part, once you start switching over to your off centers, you're gonna bounce back and forth between the two sides quite a bit um, what you're aiming for here is the uh, the edges where they come together on both sides you want them to form as straight a line down this thing as possible so there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle in it you're not gonna get it dead on every time first thing I'm gonna do is knock some of this corner off right here and get it out of my way It's also a good idea if you have a sharpening station that's not st stationary, go ahead and get it set up too. You want to keep these chisels as sharp as possible. So I haven't gone quite to the halfway point on the bottom. The top is pretty much there. So we're going to switch to the other offset hole and meet that one. And then we'll meet these lines right here and see how we're lining up. So I'm not, I'm really not that far off. I got my tips meeting right here and here. This one and this one, slightly different width coming into the tip, but closer than a lot of the ones I've done before that turned out fine. So, <clears throat> so we're going to start refining this shape a little bit. It's a pretty beefy handle. We're going to take it down just a little bit more on both sides before we before we round off those uh, ridges. Yeah, I want to round that over just a 
just a hair more. All right guys, so what I'm doing here, I'm just going back and forth, taking it down slowly until I find my medium point and I get the grip the way I want it. So sometimes I'll get lucky and I'll do one side then the other and I just happen to be good enough to go back into center axis and uh, clean it up, but not my typical experience. So. When, when you're doing this, if you decide to give this a shot, take your time, take a little bit off each side, keep going back and forth until you see this shape come into place. And the, the center line that you're creating with these ridges is really where your attention ought to be. You want that line running as straight as possible. You want them to meet in the middle. They're going to be flats. That's not a big deal. But you just keep touching both sides of it going back and forth until you get this thing exactly the way you want it anyway i'm gonna get on with it i'm gonna quit rambling about this um but like i said really light passes both sides until you get this thing the way you want it and uh and then we'll go back to the uh, center axis to clean knock these corners off and you do a little bit of shaping on those too so well uh i'm just gonna get to it get through this this step and get back with you all right so we got the general shape going here we're about balanced on both sides so this thing's still feeling pretty beefy <clears throat> Let's see how thick she is on the shallow side I got an inch and three eighths this one just over an inch so we're actually quite a bit beefy so we can actually take quite a bit more off of here if we decide to but I kind of like these big handles I think what I'm gonna do I'll put it back into the center axis here and I'll knock these corners off and then we'll just start nicking our way down nice and slow and we'll get it exactly where we want it I may take a little more off of these sides but I wanna knock these ridges down first and see how it feels if it turns out the thing just feels good then I'll stop I mean that's really all I'm doing is trying to make a comfortable handle so so right now we're gonna go back onto a center axis Which also means we can turn the lay speed back up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Move over here. chalk up on it yeah that's good all right so I'm gonna go back into these offsets <clears throat> and try to get the uh, tenon for the head pretty close I've got the width real close I still I mean it's still big you want to leave it pretty big so I got it real close so I can just file it down to match now I want to get the thickness close as well all right so while I got it here I want to take the time to clean up any gouges or anything like that it's gonna make sanding a pain in the ass so I've got ridges here I want to get those touched up Okay. 
I think I'm going to take this down a little bit thinner than it is. It's not very thin, so we're going to do a little bit more work on this top end. I really like this down here already, so I'm not going to be messing with this too much. But we're going to we're going to redo this just a little bit. I think I can make that a little bit better. Yep, yep. Guys, I think we're ready for sanding here. This feels really good. It's nice and beefy. It's going to be... Yeah. Actually, it'll sit like that, dumbass. I'm just going to get a power sander out here. And that will take... Now we have four ridges on here. That will take all that down, that will smooth all this out, and then I'll come back in with hand sanding. So as you can see, it is slightly bigger than the original. But it's not a terrible match for the original. So, I think we're just going to keep moving forward. So I'm going to cut my waist off here and here and break out a rasp and start shaping this to take this head. You know, it's funny, I refurbed a draw knife like over a year ago, and I have not used it yet, not once. So I think I'm going to give that a shot. Well guys, I let myself run out of Danish oil, so she's getting she getting mineral oil to at least have something on it. Alright guys, so <clears throat> there's the handle. It is quite a bit beefier than it absolutely has to be, but that should cut down on cramping if I'm using it for a long time. I'm just going to leave the patina on here. That's probably going to do more for protecting that head than if I clean it up and oil it. Anyway, 
that is how I do those. Hopefully there was a little bit more detail in this one. Anybody with a lathe can do this. And yeah, you can do this with just a draw knife or even on a grinder, belt grinder or whatever. Um, yeah, you can do this by hand. I just know that I can, I learned how to do, taught myself how to do this and this is how I like to do it. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you guys on the next one. See ya.